Okay, uh, region of abdomen. I'm meaning attention to, to me what will be necessary to write, I will mention, mainly read because I mean the whole work, I write the whole text for you. What is the abdomen? This is part of the human body which is located between your thorax and between your pelvis and lower extremity compartments. Then we say abdomen, we understand that this is synthetical region because it contains the walls and the cavities inside of the walls, as the region of the thorax, which we studied before. Now I put my hands now exactly in the thoracic walls, uh, abdominal walls, sorry. That is called the anterior wall of abdomen. This is called, called posterior wall of abdomen. Otherwise, we call it lumbar region. So remember, please, posterior wall of abdomen, we call also lumbar region. Regio lumbaris in Latin. Now, between my two hands, which I touch to my walls, there are two cavities of abdomen. From in front, Behind the anterior wall, we have so-called peritoneal cavity. Peritoneal cavity. This is the biggest cavity of the human body. Peritoneal cavity, which contains the organs of the peritoneal cavity. That is serous cavity, because the walls is covered by the parietal peritoneum. Organs, which is inside of the cavity, have the visceral peritoneal coverage. That's a remember, please. First, our cavity, which is behind the anterior wall, we call peritoneal cavity. There is the second cavity. To find the second cavity, we will go to back side, or from the posterior wall, we will come to in front. And we will find next cavity, which is called retroperitoneal space. As I look, if from in front to behind, I will now mention all compartments of abdomen, it will be some simple consequence. Anterior wall, peritoneal cavity, retroperitoneal space, and posterior wall, otherwise lumbar region, as I say you before. Like any other region, abdomen also, we should start from its borders. We must to understand how it is divided from neighboring regions. But here there are problems. As in case of thorax region, borders of wall and borders of cavities will be not equal, will be not same. They will be different from each other. And you know what do you see here? you will see absolutely opposite situation to the thorax. In the region of thorax, we have big walls, small cavity. Here, vice versa, we have small walls and we have big cavity. You can ask me why this happened. Two reasons for this. Reason number one, you know, it is dome-shaped diaphragm, yeah? which is goes to upwards, and to upwards, it is enlarged the abdominal cavity. Reason number two, guys, that is the bony cavity, yeah, our Hamza is right, which is called the pelvis, and which is not separated from the abdominal cavity. We don't have a real border between these two cavities. We have imaginary line, which is called linear terminus, which is located in the inner side of the pelvic bones. Let's say what has happened, guys. Abdominal cavity enlarged and to upwards, and to downwards. Part of the organs of abdominal cavity related to your thoracic cage and projected to your thoracic cage, vice versa, lower parts projected in your pelvis region. Don't be confused from that point of the view if you will find information that liver is projected in thorax, spleen is projected in thorax, small intestine projected in pelvic region. Don't be confused because, as I say, you, that is a large part of the abdomen, which is called the peritoneal cavity. Remember about it. Let's say, let's start to speak about borders. First of all, the walls. How we border? Look to me from in front to behind. Superior borders start from the psychoid process of the sternum. Then it has by the coastal arches up to the free margins of 11 and 12 ribs. 
Then it passed by inferior margin of 12 rib up to spinous process of T12. That is superior border of your vol, abdominal vols. Now inferior border, look please to me. Superior margin of the pubic synthesis, inguinal ligaments, anterior superior iliac spines, iliac crests, and the base of your sacral bone. That is the inferior border completely. You see, I draw two imaginary rings. One in upper portion, second in lower portion. And by these rings, I border wall of abdomen from up and from down. Now, one more information for you. Look here, please. I use continuation of my middle axillary lines to divide the anterior wall of abdomen from posterior wall. Otherwise, we call it less gaffed lines. Less gaffed lines. Remember, please. That's why now I make the complete division of the walls. Now let's come to the cavity, so everything is simple. From upwards, I have the diaphragm, which is naturally dividing the abdominal and thoracic cavity from each other. From down, I have the terminal line, linear terminus, which is imaginary divided abdomen from the pelvis. That's all. That is all the vision which we have in region of abdomen. Remember, please, as usually all these questions will be in your exams and in your control box. Let's continue. Today is your topic. This is one from these mentioned compartments, which we call anterior wall, or otherwise anterior lateral wall, because it's covered in the anterior compartment and portionally lateral compartment of the abdomen. How it's border? Let's just repeat it, what I say you two minutes before. Siphoid process for the largest free margins. Pubic symphys, inguinal ligament, and near superior leg spine. Now I connected these structures to each other. It is middle axillary line or less gut line, which is divided the anterior wall from the posterior. That's it. You can see now in the picture, change the picture, please. You can see now in this picture, you guys, the rhomboid shaped region, which is just in front of you. The black lines, which you see, this is the borders of the region. Except these red lines, which I will introduce for you later later. But black lines, which you see in the picture, that is the borders of region, which I described for you two minutes before. What is the logic of these red lines, which you see in the picture? Subdivision, as usual, yes. subdivision. Region is big, region is huge, and I need to make division of it into the compartments for different purposes. The purpose number one and most important one, friend, give me one chair, it will be not so simple for me to stand up on Or oh, this one. Now, wait, wait, friend. I will take the Hamza stuff. Thank you, Hamza. That's it. First of all, guys, what we must remember that subdivision is necessary just like apply description of the topographical anatomy. But of course, that is not the most important portion. Second, what is need to make this subdivision, of course, guys, it is to remember trajection of internal organs into exact parts of the anterior abdominal wall. You can ask me why. Now, from tomorrow, I start to read the urology lecture for six year students. And the first, what I introduced them again, topographical questions on projection of urological organs into the interior abdominal wall. You can ask me why this message. Simply, guys, for example, you are my patient, I come to you. If I don't know these projections, I cannot understand any pain origin of your body. Because usually pain is uh, projected in the same place to the organs projection. So if you want to recognize which kind of doesn't matter, is it, is it local pain or is it projected or relief pain? Anyhow, I must know the projection. Let's say, remember, please, we need to know the organ uh, subdivision of region, not only to study topographical, but much more important to make some investigations, like the physical investigations, yeah, like the, for example, the so, uh, instrumental investment, for example, I need to make sonography of some organ. If I don't know its projection, how I will do it? 
Or I take the X-ray and I want to identify some structures in the picture, but I don't know ways of location and projection. How I will do it? It's impossible. And finally, why we need this division? It is to make surgery, guys. If I need to make surgery, I must to know the place of surgical incision, puncture. A, I will do it again according to these divisions, yeah, according to the projections. Because what is the best way to reach Hamza? That is shortest way. I will not go from that side of the room to come to him. No, I will choose the shortest way. In the surgery, they work in the same logic. If I want to open the organ, I will find the shortest way. The most short will be the way the less structures I will damage during my manipulation. That is more than simple. How I make now this subdivision? Look at everybody here. You can see I draw here two vertical lines and two horizontal lines. And finally, it gives, first of all, three stores, upper, middle, and lower. And it gives, finally, nine compartments. Three in upper, three in middle, and three in lower. Let's start from these imaginary lines. Everything is simple. Look to me. Vertical lines, it is your same middle clavicular line. Yes. Otherwise, if you are a very great muscular person, it can be drawn like lateral margin of your rectus muscle. If your muscles is visible, you can use the lateral. These two lines is coincide to each other. You will provide it your middle clavicular line, it will pass by the lateral margin of the rectus. I think it is simple. What about these two horizontal lines? Look, upper one we call bicostal line, Lower one we call bispinal line. Why such kind of strange names? Because bicostal line connected lowest points of right and left costal arches, it means ten ring. Because you know, costal arch is formed by from up to down, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, eight, nine, ten fuse with the seven one and together with the seven one they join to the stem. So the lowest point of your costal arch will be the lowest point of the third ring. So I connect, I find it, I make the imaginary connection, this is my bicostal line. Bispinal is much more simple. You find anterior superior iliac spines in the right and left side, and again, imaginary, you connect them to each other. Now, from anatomy, remember, we have three stores. Epigastrium, mesogastrium, hypogastrium. In each one we have its division. Epigastrium, right, left, hypochondric regions, proper epigastrium region. Mesogastrium, right and left, lateral abdominal regions, umbilical region between them. Here to be attentive, don't mix big um, uh, umbilical region with small umbilical ring. That is not the same. Umbilical ring, it will be just the midpoint of your umbilical region, but that is not the same structural units. Umbilical region is much more bigger than umbilical ring, which is inside of it. So even your controls will be questionable. Umbilical region, don't speak just about the ring, and vice versa, it will be questioned about the ring, don't speak about all this region. Now we come to the lower compartment, right and left, inguinal region and suprapubic region, between that. And what you should remember now, stand up in front of me here, look to your friends. Now look, this is anterior abdominal wall. I am like physician or like surgeon, doesn't matter. should understand absolutely how his organs or her organs, doesn't matter projected into anterior abdominal wall. Now let's start from upper compartment. This is his, look, right, hypochondric region, left, hypochondric region, proper epigastral region. Right hypochondrium, remember forever. Structure number one, liver. But here there are the problem. If I will now palpate it, what is palpation? Physical investigation of the human body. There are three main physical methods of investigation. Auscultation, palpation, percussion. Yes or no? Yes. And general review, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Then I make now palpation for adults. Listen to me attentively. In normal conditions, if it is healthy adult, 
inferior margin of this river will be coincide with the coastal large and will not descend into the upper. Do you understand what I said? So if I will now copy his river and will find that it one, two centimeter or three centimeter below the coastal large, it will show the hepatos. Pathological enlargement of the liver, but not the same for the children. Yes. Not the same for the children. Why? Because in the childhood, like the you know, yeah, in embryonal time, it made the hemopoiesis. Let's say the sizes of the organ comparable with the sizes of your skeleton is bigger. That's why in childhood it is usually approximately one two finger, or we can see approximately two centimeters. Three. It is below the coastal large, up to approximately 10, 11 years. Then it is skeleton start to grow more actively in pubertant time of the life, and the liver the, uh, goes to upwards and it is covered by the thoracic cage. That's the first what I will find here, it is the inferior margin of the liver. This adult is not a child. I will find here projection of the gallbladder. Gallbladder is projected exactly here. I will find here projection of the right knee of transverse colon. You know, yeah, right knee is place of trans transition of your ascending colon into your transverse colon. So I will find it here. And I will find here the projection of a superior pole of his right kidney. It also will be projected in this region. That's all, friends. This is whole structures. Now let's come to the left side. I will find here projection of the spleen. Spleen partly located behind of the thoracic wall. Partly it is projected in anterior abdominal wall. We will study it whole speed. I will find here the left knee of transverse colon, place of transition of transverse into descending one. I will find here also the left kidney with suprarenal gland. But what I want to mention and remind you, right kidney has approximately two, three centimeters lower position because of liver tension to it, guys. Evolutionally, liver tension descended right kidney. That's I remember, please. For right kidney, upper pole located in the level of 11 rib. For left kidney, 11 rib located in the level of the pelvis of it. It is divided the pelvis into two parts. It says located higher. Then we will study the kidneys. Of course, we will spoke, speak about it once again. Just now, remember. Now, proper epigastrium. Of course, the stomach, but not whole stomach. The greater curvature of the stomach will be projected in the uh, left uh, hypochondral region, which I mentioned for you before. Let's so, so remember about it. It is greater curvature of the stomach, Le left hypochondral region. That is very important to remember. In left hypochondral region, we will project also the uh, tail of pancreas. Tail of pancreas come up to the high loop of your spleen, and distance between them one to centimeters, not more. That's why then you make the splenectomy, you should be very attentive to not damage the pancreatic tail, to not make the diabetic mellitus, because inside of the pancreas tail we have Langer Gans cells, which is productive the important hormone, which is called insulin. So remember about it. Let's again come to proper epigastral region. Stomach, we, as I see you before. What else we have here? From, the end, uh, from, uh, from greater curvature of the stomach, omentum mayor will be starting. A superior horizontal part of the duodenum, left lobe of the liver will be projected in this region. Remember about it, please. It's like that is the structures which is located in now. Now let's come to middle compartment. From right side down, please, to left side. Right lateral region, it is a standing column. Starting from middle compartment everywhere, you will see the loops of the small intestine. Look in upper compartment, we don't describe it. Starting from middle, everywhere we have the loops of the small intestine. 
We will describe very inferior hole of the right kidney, thank you very much, and first portion of the ureter, right ureter, which is start from the pelvis of the kidney, and descend it approximately equal to the lateral margin of the rectus muscle, up to the place of its connection with the ureter leg. Let's continue, my friends. We come now to the uh, left uh, lateral abdominal region, distantly in pelvis. Again, small intestine. Again, now left kidney inferior pole will be here. Now, middle portion will be head and body of the pancreas. Majority of the loops of the small intestine, mainly it will be the jejunum here. Yeah? We will see inferior portions of the duodenum. It means parts descendants, inferior horizontal part, and part ascendants. We will study it together. And we will see the greater portion of greater omentum. In the retraperitoneal space, we will see biggest vessels of human body. A little bit to the right, we will see inferior double beam. A little bit to the left, we will see our Remember, guys, that is more than simple. Now let's come to the inguinal regions. Right inguinal region, cycle with appendix vermiformis. Again, small intestine. Again, the inferior portions of the ureter, as we say before. Also inside of the wall, not in the cavity, we will have inguinal canal with its content. This is not the cavity structures. This is the wall structure because inguinal canal located inside of the anterior abdominal wall. Seemingly inside of the left. Instead of that second, we will have sigma. Again, we will have small intestine. Again, inside of the wall, we will have the inguinal canal. For the females, we will describe inside of the canal round ligament. For the males, we will describe that. Huh? What is main structural unit of the male's inguinal canal? Spermatic? Yes, it is, it is even funny to ask such kind of the question. Now we come to the suprapubic region. Again, small intestine. Now here we will describe the fundus of the urinary bladder that it is filled by the uterus. For the females which have the pregnancies in the anamnes, we will describe the uterus here. Let's say, remember please, this is the most important structural units with and the terminal portion of right and left the ureters which is connected with the urinary bladder. That's all. This is whole projections which you must know. Now change the slide please to next one. And I write everybody the name of the topic. Anterior abdominal wall and its layers. Now we start to speak about stratography. Yeah? We describe the borders. Now we come to the layers of anterior abdominal wall. Finish to write anything and look to many, many times. Everybody see his own or her own anterior abdominal wall. And I think it's not so hard for you to imagine the layers of this region. Let's start from the skin. First of all, I want to tell you that this is one of the most elastic and movable skins of the human body. Because of this, the females can have the pregnancy. The males can have a lot of fat, and also we use the abdominal breathing. Don't, for males, I mean, we I mean, use we, males. For females, mainly this thoracic type of the breathing. So how it is possible only if you have elasticity of the skin? Because it will be protrused. For protrusion, you need elastic skin. There are only one exception. It is your belly bottom. In your belly bottom, skin is fused with the deepest layers. That's why it is losing its elasticity and it's losing its movement. About hair coverage, males and females have different superior margin of the hair cut. This is dimorphism, which is different from each other. Look here, please. For the females, usually, upper border of the hair coverage, it is horizontal line, which is located approximately four centimeters above the, above the pubic symphysis, like this. For males, no, it is oblique line, which can be continued up to inferior margin of umbilicus. You can ask me why I tell you. You will make uh, investigations of endocrinological problems. You can 
phi also by differences in the hair coverage. If you will see male with females type of the hairs, you will understand that this is some problems with high concentration of the estrogens. Other question, what is it? But it is possible to detect it in some way. Okay, let's continue. Huge amount of the sweat and sebaceous glands, especially near the inguinal ligaments. That is the natural border between your anterior abdominal wall and lower extremity. Here we have great concentration of mainly sweat glands, but also of sebaceous glands. By the way, seemingly hot of this kind of the glands we have in the region of natal cleft, which is divided your right and left. Uh, gluteal regions from each other, otherwise we call gluteal fold, intergluteal fold, which is divided right and left gluteal or not all left. Remember about it, please. So here also we have huge concentration of the glands. So this is specificities of our skin. Layer number two, which you can see in this picture, it is subsequent yeah. picture. Remember, guys, this is one of the natural places of fat accumulation in the human body by the male type. Because for the males, mainly fat is accumulated in belly, in anterior abdominal walls. For the females, mainly it is the gluteal region and it is the fox. So remember, please, and the upper portion of the femoral regions also for the uh, females can be the place of accumulation of the fat. That's a fat is great developed in anterior abdominal wall. Again, exception. Again, the belly wall. I told you many times, guys, if you see depression in the human body, it means some layers was absent. That's a first layer which is absent in your belly bottom, it is fatty tissue. How it is happened? Why it is happened? Because we lose our umbilical cord. Then we lose our umbilical cord. The scar is formed here. Scar it is junction of different layers by connective tissue. It's a fatty tissue flow here. By the way, not only fatty tissue was absent here. A lot of layers will be absent inside of a beautiful region. Only three layers. From seven layers of anterior abdominal wall, in the umbilical ring, we will see only three. Same conclusion. As if when the umbilical cord... Uh, he can't make conclusion, but conclusion is simple. If from seven layers here there are three, it is a weak place of the human body. If it is weak place, we can see formation of happiness. Let's say remember, please, in the future, in the next class, we will speak about weak places of anterior abdominal wall. By the way, umbilical ring, it's not a single weak place. The weakest place, it is your inguinal spaces. Say so the most usual type of the hernia, it is not umbilical, it is inguinal. But now remember the definition weak place of human body, that is the place which is lack of layers, which doesn't contain some layers, such kind of the places we call weak. You can say, why in our body we have such kind of the place? Simply